Hi, I'm Pastor Don Cherry of the Shenandoah Valley Baptist Church in Stevens City, Virginia. And we're glad that you've chosen to join us this morning for our worship service. We're hoping that it'll be a blessing to you, be an encouragement to you, and even a little bit of a challenge to you as we look into the Word of God together. So I hope that you'll follow us, have your Bible out, and all join in with us and join us as we go into the Word of God this morning. May it be a blessing to you. Bibles, if you would, and go to Psalm 122. Psalm 122. When you get there, you'll notice that first verse, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This psalm that we're going to look at this morning is kind of broke down into three different uh, sections, I guess you could say, three different teaching aspects, and want to just kind of deal with them as we go through um, this psalm this morning. Uh, first of all, this is referred to as a psalm of ascents, okay? Matter of fact, uh, um, your Bible, you'll see plenty of them that are titled Psalm of Ascents. Now, these were songs that the children of Israel would sing as they went up to Jerusalem up to the temple to worship, in particular, during the high feast days. You might remember that there are three particular feasts where Jews, from, in particular Jewish males from all over the Roman Empire at that time, would come to Jerusalem in order to observe what was going on there at the temple. There was teaching involved in that. But when you think up to Jerusalem and all, do not think directional, but rather think um, elevational. All right, because Jerusalem and all was at the highest point at that in mid Israel, it was the highest point. So when you went to Jerusalem, you were literally going up. If you approached from the north, you were coming from Galilee, which there the Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below sea level. So you're going up to Jerusalem. If you come from the east, you're coming from the Jordan River, which flows out of the Sea of Galilee, and so it too is well below sea level, so you are coming up to Jerusalem. If you come from the west, you're coming from the Mediterranean Sea, which is sea level, all right? So we see you're going up once again to Jerusalem, and then from the south, of course, is where the Dead Sea at, the lowest spot on earth, 1,400 feet below sea level, you are definitely going up to Jerusalem, all right? So the children of Israel, the Jewish people, would sing these various songs of ascent as they approach Jerusalem for times of worship and for these high feast days. So I want you to notice there in verse 1 a couple of things. Actually, we'll look at verse 1 and 2 and kind of break that down a little bit. Because one of the themes that it deals with is literally stepping into the presence of God. Coming before the Lord, coming into his presence there in David's time, what would have been the tabernacle, and then, of course, later on, after Solomon, you had the Jewish temple. So notice it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, a couple things I want to point out. First of all, they were glad, all right? Now, there's some things that you're glad about today, at least I hope there are. You may not be glad about the gas prices. You may not be glad about inflation. You may, may not be glad about what's going on over in Ukraine and all, but there are some things that I hope you are at least glad about, okay? You know, we, 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 ex, we, we experience joy. We experience a happiness over certain things. So let me just ask you this morning, okay, what are you glad about? Okay, somebody's saying the resurrection. What else? What are you glad about today? I'm sorry? Salvation. Salvation. Okay, what else? Well, let me ask you, how many of you are glad? Okay? Okay? Well, listen, if you really are glad, you need to tell your face about it. You know it? You know? But he said, I was glad that we're going to go to the house of the Lord. So I want to ask you this morning, is that how you approached this morning coming into the house of God? Was it Sunday? Was it the alarm went off? Was it you had a lousy Saturday? You got up, the coffee maker didn't work, you tripped over the cat and all that stuff and all. And so you were glad to come to the house, right? Well, maybe not, <laughs> okay? But you look forward to coming. You know, 
When you're glad about something, don't you tell people about it? You're glad about something. Man, I got this terrific deal over here at Aldi and everything. You need to go over there and get that. You're glad. You told somebody. Or whatever it might be you were glad about. I hit the lottery. Well, I hope you're not playing the lottery. But anyway, you would understand that would make you glad. Man, I hit that. But let me ask you, are you glad when it comes to coming to the house of God? Do you look forward to that? Is that something you tell others about? Man, tomorrow I get to go to the house of God. Man, I love going to the house of God and everything. That's where me and my family, we meet and we worship and we learn and we pray and we love one another. Are we glad about that? David here, he's saying, I'm glad. Matter of fact, notice David's the king and everything, but he's getting an invitation. I'm glad when they said to me. And then I want you to notice, let us go into the house of the Lord. All right? It didn't say unto, it said into the house of the Lord. What's the significance of that? Well, look at verse 2. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. So they have gotten so far as the gate. This is as far as they've gone. But now the invitation is, come in. Come in and let's meet God. Come in and let's get close to God. Come in and let's worship God. Because you have to keep in mind the, ta the tabernacle at the time, okay? How was the tabernacle set? How many of you remember the, um, uh, the TV series MASH? You remember MASH? Okay. I'm a MASH fan. I'll just be honest with you. Watched it, loved it, and all like that. But if you remember, MASH stands for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, right? In other words, that hospital could be moved if it needed to, okay? Well, that was the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a mobile place of worship, basically. And as the children of Israel moved through the wilderness, the tabernacle moved with them, you see. And then once they established themselves in the land of Israel, the tabernacle was set more or less permanently. And then, of course, later on came the temple. But anyhow, when, we, when you look at the tabernacle, there was an edifice in the middle of it, a tent, okay? And that tent was divided into two uh, compartments. The first was called the holy place, all right? And there you found the table of showbread, you found the menorah, and you found the um, uh, table of incense. And all, each of them representing Jesus Christ, okay? The table of showbread, Christ said, hey, I am the what? Bread of life, all right? And then the uh, candelabra, the menorah, the light, Jesus said again, I am the light of the world. And then even in the incense, which represents the prayers and other thing, knowing that Christ is always praying for us. He's going before the Father. We have one mediator between God and man. And guess who that is? It's not the Pope. It's not Pastor Cherry. It's not David Jeremiah. It's Jesus Christ. Okay? He is our intercessor there. And then there is a veil. And beyond that veil sat the Ark of the Covenant. Y'all remember Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark? Okay, the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the very throne of God. Nobody could go beyond that veil except the high priest once a year with a blood sacrifice. And it was made for an atonement for the children of Israel. So here, David is being invited, let's go into the house of the Lord. Let's come into the presence of God, you see. Folks, when we think of it like that, it is so much more than just going to church. Do you understand that? Because we often talk, you know, Sunday morning, I'm going to church. Hey, I'm going to church. No, we ought to be looking at coming into the presence of God and preparing ourselves to do so. Do we do that? Are we looking forward to meeting with God? Or are we just simply going to say, yeah, man, I'll give it an hour. Hey, no problem there. Where are we going to eat afterward? See what I'm saying? Are we coming together to be in the presence of the Lord? We've been standing out long enough. Are we willing to come into the presence of God and to worship him truly in spirit and in truth? And then also, if you'll think along these lines as we go through this, I think what Jerusalem was to the Old Testament Israelite, so the church is to the New Testament Christian. 
And as we go through this, you'll see you know, what I'm talking about when I speak on that. So notice verse 3 there. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, if you've ever been over to the Middle East, you know that things are not spread out like they are here in America. They're very compacted. Their streets are small. Their homes, their buildings are small. They're, they're together. They're on top of one another. It's, it's very compact, all right? It's very much together, you would say. we would say. Well, how does that relate to the church? As Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, how does that relate to the church, the body of Christ, being compact together, being in love with one another, being concerned about one another, coming together for a specific purpose, not only to worship God, but also to minister to one another, you see, compact, close-knit. So the Bible said here in Psalm, I was glad when they said, go to the house of the Lord, and everything. Keep in mind, though, the gladness was not, and everything, coming to this building, all right? That's not what the gladness was. The gladness was meeting with God's people. Does that make us glad? Do we look forward to meet with one another? Do we look forward to coming together as the family of God, you see, caring for one another? That's what we're leading to as we go through Psalm 122. Now notice verse 4. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel, and here's the purpose, folks, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. They were coming together to celebrate, to celebrate. To sing hallel unto the Lord. No, I didn't just cuss. H-A-L-L-E-L, -L -E -L, okay? Hallel. To sing hallel unto the Lord. What is that? Praise. That's what the word means. To praise, to celebrate. Folks, look. I live in the real world just like you do. It pains me when I go to the gas station. It pains my wife when she goes to the grocery store. It pains us when we watch the news and we see all the, the, the chaos that is taking place. But if you stop and think about it, we have got a lot to praise the Lord for. We have got a lot to celebrate for. And if anything, not on, the, not, not on this world, not in this life, but the life that is coming, the life that we have, you know, in Jesus Christ. That is the eternal blessed hope that we have. And folks, we cannot lose sight of that. You know, I, I think sometimes we as believers and everything, we want to hang on to the things of this life and everything. Because, oh, I want to, you know, my home, my car, my this, my that and everything. This is a good thing, my job. I like my job. I hope I can keep doing my job. Does any of that compare to the day that we'll see Jesus face to face? Not a bit. Not a bit of it, you see. Man, are we looking forward to coming together with the family of God, the, uh, 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 being a blessing one to another and celebrating Jesus Christ. Look, I'm as guilty as anybody else. I've already had conversation this morning about the weather. I've already had conversation this morning about, you know, gas prices. I've already had conversation this morning about, you know, which donuts are the best in the back. You know, all those important things. But you know, how often do we come to the house of God and we talk about God? We talk about his blessings. We talk about his goodness. We talk about the hope that we have together in Jesus Christ. Now notice, they come to give thanks to the name of the Lord, verse 5, for thrones are set there for judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Now, this is kind of a, uh, I guess you would say this is kind of a message within a message. Because see, here, here we need to understand and everything that it was in these places that it's talking about judgment. The thrones are set for judgment. That's what it was for, was to solve issues between the people of God. Too often we go outside the body of Christ to get things solved instead of coming together and working together on them solving those things. I'll give you a real good illustration. You remember when Solomon was king and there was two ladies that were battling over whose baby it was? Y'all remember that? And I think this one said, no, it's my baby. The other one said, no, this is my baby. So Solomon said, hey, I'll tell you what, give me a sword. 
I'm just going to cut the kid in half and both of you can have part of them. And of course, the real mother said, no, no, don't do that and everything. Go ahead, let her have it. And so Solomon knew who the real mother was as a result of that. But notice where they came. They came to the house of God. Folks, that's what the Word of God does for us. It's a lamp under our feet. It's a light under our path. It guides and directs us and everything. Sadly, there are denominations today that are tied up in, 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 and I'll just put it this way, in pagan court, trying to get issues settled that have come when we ought to come together and settle them according to God's Word if there's any issues like that, you see. This is the importance of the assembly. This is the importance of coming together. This is the importance of seeing this beyond just going to church. This is the importance of coming together as the family of God and the body of Christ. Now I want to close with these last four verses here because this kind of sums it up. A verse that you've heard quite often. Verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of the brethren and companions, I will now say peace be within you because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. When it talks about praying for the peace, that word peace is shalom. And the word shalom literally means a wholeness, a health, a, a wellness and everything. It's not just the absence of conflict. Okay, it is a wealth of wholeness, you see. This is what we're praying for when he talks about praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, from a literal standpoint, we need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem because the only way Jerusalem will ever have peace is when the Prince of Peace returns. When Christ returns, he sets up his kingdom, there will be peace, you see. So you know what? When we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we're praying for the return of Christ, aren't we? Messiah, come. But also, should we not be praying for the peace of the house of God? And that's praying for one another. See, here's, here's where we get off, because I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? I, I, I'm talking to me. You heard the old preachers that always said, you know, when one finger's pointing out there, there's four pointing back here. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing that. But here's the thing. I would dare say that every one of us Every one of us, I hope you do, we pray for the peace of Shenandoah Valley Baptist Church. We pray for Shenandoah Valley Baptist Church, don't we? God, we pray that you'll bless our church. God bless Shenandoah Valley Church. Lord, we pray that you'll provide Shenandoah But look, when you think about that, who's Shenandoah Valley Baptist Church? Each of us. So how are we praying for each of us? You see what I'm talking about? So am I praying for Mike and Karen? Am I praying for Richard, who well needs it? Yeah. And I pray, am I praying for Daryl and Connie? Am I praying for Barry and Becky? Or am I just saying, God bless our church? You see where I'm coming from? If we're going to pray for our church, that means we have to pray for each other. Okay? We have to pray for each other. And as God brings one another to mind. We need to, but I know it's not going to happen because none of us have time to do that, right? I'll just leave it up to you, you see. It's going to take a little time. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. You see, David here is relaying who he's praying for. He's not just sitting back and saying, I hope Jerusalem has peace. He's praying for his brethren. He's praying for his companions. He's specific in his prayers for them. Just like we need to be specific in our prayers for one another. You see, we do pray, don't get me wrong. When somebody's got a health need, man, we put it out, we announce it and everything, and people are praying. But is that the only time we're supposed to pray for one another? 
If we're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, if we're to pray for the house of God, then we've got to be specifically praying for one another as God brings us to mind. If God brings Barbara to my mind when I'm praying tomorrow or something, I need to pray for Barbara. You see what I'm saying? Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to do that? A couple of verses real quick. Go back to Psalm 129, please. Psalm 129. Psalm 129 and verse 5. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. There's so many things we could jump off there and talk, but here, here's how I would see it. You want to go ahead and speak against the people of God, speak against the people of God. But you don't answer to me or you don't answer to anybody else, you'll answer to God. We need to be careful how we relate to one another, how we speak one to another. No, because we're talking about being the children of God, amen. Now go with me also to Psalm 137. Psalm 137, look at verse 5 and 6. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. Folks, as believers, we need to pray physically for the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying for the Lord's return. We need to uphold God's people, the chosen people. We need to pray for them. There's no two ways about that. But we need to be praying for one another. We can't leave one another aside. We can't leave one another adrift. We need to realize we're all in this thing together. We're all part of the body of Christ. Are we going to pray for one another? Are we going to go into the house of the Lord? Are we going to come into that intimate relationship? Or are we going to be just inside the walls, but not into that place where the very Shekinah God dwells? Jesus taught me Beatitudes. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Do you have a hunger today for the things of God? Do you have a thirst for an intimacy with God? Have we sat back and become content with our traditions, with our preferences, with our programs? Or do we desire to enter into that place where we meet God one-on-one? -on -one? Commune, worship, praise, and celebrate Him. And from there, we celebrate with one another. Heads bowed and eyes closed, please. Folks, thanks for joining us in our live stream here from Shenandoah Valley Baptist Church in Stephen City, Virginia. And I trust that the message was an encouragement to your heart today. If you'd like to find out more about that ministry, or, you know, if there's something we can pray for you about, or a spiritual question that we can answer, I want to encourage you to go to our website at svbcfamily.com. That's for Shenandoah Valley Baptist Church Family. Dot com and just follow the prompts there and you can send your prayer request you can send your question and everything we'll get back to you as soon as possible but as always you're welcome to join us any sunday at 10 30 a.m right here in uh, stephen city located right between route 11 and i-81 so uh, come and see us sometime but until then i pray the lord bless you i pray the lord keep you and that the lord shine his face upon you